Here comes a car. A slow car? Not really. But it's marching towards the Skoda Rapid and signifying its end. Skoda has a, quite a lot of models, but um, they said we want something that will be like the Golf. So they made the Scala. Again, I guess. But anyway, they made it their own way, of course. That modern Skoda front mask is now slightly more curved. They did forget about anything but a straight ruler when designing the headlights. Scala's profile reminds me of a small estate. The rear is much more attractive, especially with its funky rear window. I smell some Volvo V40. Because the Skoda has always been about practicality, you of course have a fair bit of space at the front, but also at the back. Now these seats have been moved back quite a bit, but I still sit very, very comfortably with lots of space here in the back. So no complaints from the rear passengers. I also quite like this, the fuel filler cap. You open it and you've got this little scraper there for those cold winter days if you park outside so you don't think where have I left it at home and at the back this really reminds me of a Volvo but I, I, I kind of like this window going all the way down and it's it's not always um, not all the models have this actually it's depending on the um, equipment level I believe and then you open the boot and of course you have lots of space uh, we put all of our stuff in there and there's still quite a bit of space for extra. So yeah, practicality. If you thought the interior was boring, think again. It's not exactly exciting though. I like the texture on the doors, which liven up the panels a bit, as well as the stitching on the seats. Right now the Scala is available with a 70, 85 and 110 kilowatt petrol engines and an 85 kilowatt diesel, soon to be joined by a 66 kilowatt natural gas engine. So this is just the, uh, the preview of how the new Škoda Scala feels, how it drives, and so on and so forth. We'll do more in a proper test, but um, yeah, I, I quite like it. I like how it looks, I, li I like how it feels inside. It's, it's a Volkswagen, of course. It's built like a Volkswagen, so it's solid. It drives like a Volkswagen, so it's very nice. I really like this uh, steering wheel, which is the uh, sporty steering wheel. It's actually really lovely. Um, what I don't like is the fact that, well, the air conditioning system now, apparently they decided that it just had too many buttons. So being able to change which vents are open, that's just so last century. Uh, what you want now is to press on the menu button and then you get the air conditioning on the screen, then you press the button for uh, vents and then you select which vent you want. So that's quite annoying and also the, um, the strength of the fan is on the touch screen. That's very annoying because it's on the side and eh, it's a little fiddly and you have to look away from where you're going. I don't like that. But otherwise the infotainment screen is nice. This one doesn't have a navigation. I've got uh, an analog instrument cluster. You can get the digital ones, so that's pretty cool. 
The six-speed manual gearbox is very nice. It's very notchy, mechanical, feely. Um, it's a joy to shift gears, really. And under the bonnet is the one-liter three-cylinder TSI engine, a petrol one. And it, it's all right, actually. I'm surprised by how civilized it is. I'm not a fan of these three-cylinder uh, three engines, but it's not bad. It has a bit of power, and uh, like I said, even on the highway here doing 130 kilometers per hour, it's fairly quiet and fairly smooth, I have to say. So kudos to that. What I don't like with these three-cylinder tiny engines is how little torque they have under 2,000 RPM. So, you know, if you really need to get somewhere, for example, at a crossroads, uh, it's, it's not so nice. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, it's nice. Loads of space in the back. I believe the uh, rear seats can be optionally heated as well, so that's pretty nice. And there's a lot of various um, systems, secu uh, security, uh, safety systems, assistance systems. It's pretty nice. Try saying that 10 times quickly. Anyway, more about this car in the proper test. The base Scala model starts at 15,500 euros, which is fairly sensible. For a top-of-the-line model with almost all the optional extras, a diesel engine and automatic transmission though, you'll be paying 32,000 euros.